Good evening and welcome to the Capital Center. Tonight, the Marietta College Pioneers are in town at five and seven in conference play, nine and 10 overall. And the Crusaders are out for revenge at six and six currently in the OAC and 11 and eight overall. I'm Jimmy Bloomfield. Thanks for tuning in to the Freshies pregame show. Well, last time these two teams met, it didn't go so well for the Crusaders. They lost by a count of 84 to 66, and it was the Marlo Taylor show from outside. She knocked in nine threes by herself from Marietta, four of which came in the second quarter alone, and she was red hot on her way to a career-high 33 points. Devin Hefner also added in 23. Those two alone had 55. Capital, again, as a team, had 66 total. A strong game from Emma Burns with 16 points in the first matchup, but not much else to show for offensively for the Crusaders. So back on their home floor against Marietta. We'll try to re erase the result of the January 15th matchup and stay hot as the Crusaders are playing some really good basketball here of late. You go through their last few games two wins here at home. They did lose to Ohio Northern, but defeated Heidelberg as well, and then lost by two to John Carroll, a game they were down by 15 in, and ever since the fourth quarter of that John Carroll game back on January 18th, the Crusaders have been playing some high-quality basketball, and that is ever since that Marietta game, really. Uh, they, they did lose the Marietta game. The next game was that John Carroll game, and then they lost by one score at Ohio Northern as well. So you go back to the blowout against Marietta, the Crusaders have either won in blowout fashion or lost by one possession. So playing some really good basketball right now and finding a way to put it all together at the right time as we are in the month of February. We have just six games left on the season and the Crusaders are trying to secure a home game in the first round of the OAC tournament. And a lot of that's gonna come in today's matchup. Marietta with a win would leapfrog Capital because they would have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker as well by winning both the games against Capital. So a lot to play for for both sides. Marietta trying to lock down home court. Capital trying to lock down some home court. And I think both teams really just looking to keep momentum going as it was a, a slow start to Marietta's season as well. And the Pioneers have really come on of late to get back to five and seven. Uh, if you look at their December schedule, they went 0-3 in OAC play. Then they lost their first game back in, after the holiday break as well. After that, they rattled off three straight wins. Since then, they've won two of five, but have had a really tough schedule facing Ohio Northern, Baldwin Wallace, John Carroll, Mount Union, and Otterbein over their last five games. So their schedule is going to lighten up, especially at the end of the month. And they have M Mount Union, Wilmington, Muskingum, and Heidelberg to close. So even if Marietta loses tonight, they are still going to be in contention for a, uh, a, that number four seed based on the way the schedule breaks down. So we're, we got a lot to get to on the pregame show. We'll talk more about that first matchup between these two teams, not spend too much time on it, but at least talk about some of the statistics from it and what we can learn from that matchup. And we will talk about just both teams in general and how they match up here for game two of their meetings this season. We will also take a look at the OAC. And we sat down with Coach Jeffers to get her thoughts on what was a really cool Saturday here at the Capitol Center and uh, what tonight and the rest of the season has in stores for the Crusaders. So stay with us. We'll be right back on the Freshies pregame show. Freshie are screaming from the rooftops, let there be lunch. And no, not a sad sandwich at your desk. We're talking a flavorful Tex-Mex burrito after a brisk walk, or a nutritious kale Caesar with your work bestie. So let's do our minds, bodies, and taste buds a favor, and let there be lunch. Download the game-changing new Freshie app to have your food ready, or order at Freshie.com. OSU Sports Medicine is a proud supporter of Crusader student-athletes by providing sports health services for Capital University Athletics and Student Health Services. Through the work and care of team physicians and athletic trainers, it's the team behind your team. For all fans, if you're looking to improve your physical performance, recover from an injury, or stay active for a lifetime, the experts at Ohio State Sports Medicine are there for you. Visit sportsmedicine.osu.edu or call 366 433 
And welcome back to the Capitol Center and the Freshies Free Game Show. Freshies reminding you, healthy, fast, casual food that's good for the body and soul. Capitol students get 10% off at Freshies Eat Energize. Let's get to the OAC update brought to you by Army ROTC. And uh, kind of went through some of these standings, but let's talk about the bigger picture here. And it starts at the top with a, quite a race between some schools up in the Northeast Corridor of Ohio. Baldwin Wallace and John Carroll currently tied at 11 and 1, 17 and 2 overall for both teams. And uh, one of those two teams is likely to win this conference. However, Ohio Northern is still knocking on the door at 9 and 3 and uh, could make it could make a run here down the stretch. They do play Baldwin Wallace tonight. They're at John Carroll later this season. They have to win both those games to have a prayer at at winning this conference. And if they do, we will have a very fun three-team race. If they do not win, then obviously uh, their season's probably done in terms of winning the regular season title, and they'll try their luck in the OAC tournament. They seem to be cemented into that number three position. Capital is number four right now at six and six. Three games back of Ohio Northern, they split their series. It's unlikely the, the Crusaders will catch them, but if Ohio Northern goes through a cold streak, I guess Capital could theoretically get into that position as well. So we'll have to see how the next probably week and a half shakes out for Ohio Northern to see if we have a chance at that three spot. But we do control the destiny for a home game here at the Capitol Center in the OAC tournament. That would be in that number four position. Who we play at number five in that case would be a complete mystery at this point. Otterbein, Marietta, and Wilmington all tied at five and seven, all coming off losses on Saturday as well. Mount Union still in the picture at 4 and 8. They're currently the last team in, but only two games back as well. And then you've got an interesting Heidelberg team that pulled off an upset over Wilmington their last time out. And boy, did the, did the Berg need that win. They're now only one game out of a playoff spot and two out of the fifth seed if you think about it. They still have a brutal schedule to close, uh, but they did get past Baldwin Wallace already. They do play John Carroll, Ohio Northern Capital, Mount Union Marietta still and four of their last six are on the road it's a tough finish for the Berg but they're still in the running for a playoff spot as well tonight's schedule I mentioned the marquee matchup of the night will be Baldwin Wallace traveling to Ada to take on Ohio Northern John Carroll travels to Heidelberg tonight Mount Union is at Muskingum and Ottermine travels to Wilmington that is what's on schedule here today. And uh, with us not being on the air Saturday, we can go through some of those matchups as well. Ohio Northern will travel to Marietta on Saturday. Heidelberg will travel to Muskingum. Mount Union is actually, you know, they, they are traveling to Otterbein. Sorry, it looked like it was flipped here on me, but Mount Union is traveling to Otterbein. And Wilmington will face off with Baldwin Wallace. Capital at John Carroll would figure to be the marquee matchup of the day. We'll be back here on the 12th with uh, four, four games left in the season at that point. In terms of the OAC player of the week, John Carroll had been running hot in this category, but the OAC player of the week this time around, it was actually Olivia Nagy again. No surprise there as Nagy led John Carroll to victories over Mount Union and Marietta. She fell just short of a quadruple double against Marietta. She had 15 points, 15 rebounds, eight assists, and eight blocks. She also had 15 and 13 against Mount Union earlier in the week and had eight blocks in that game as well. Olivia currently the national leader in blocks per game at the NCAA D3 level. So congratulations to Olivia again. She won it two weeks back. And then Heffington has also won in between that. So John Carroll has won the last three of these awards. And uh, Heffington, when she was actually named to the player of the, of the week, she was also named as a first team all region by D3hoops.com. Uh, that was recently as well. So obviously been a very strong performance from John Carroll's individual players and uh, some other exciting news yesterday Ellie Watchman was named the February Scholar Athlete of the Month and Ellie obviously a very big capital I ambassador basically her whole family is, is from here and went here and her sister played for the team as well Annika of course and uh, she's 
been killing it in the classroom as well as on the floor here. So a cool write-up on the on the website, athletics.capital.edu, um, for that as well. She grew up coming to these games, and uh, both sides of her story have a long history of attending the university all the way back to 1909. So very cool story there, and uh, congratulations to Ellie for being named February Scholar Athlete of the Month. That'll do it for our OSC update. When we come back, we will move into the coach's corner and talk with Coach Dixie Jeffers about this matchup and the day that was here Saturday night at the Capitol Center and then move into a breakdown between these two teams and who has the upper hand moving into this one tonight. Marietta at Capitol coming up in about 17 and a half minutes. Stay with us. It's the perfect sports bar because it's not just a sports bar. I'm Gary Calico, founder and president of Rusty Bucket. A lot of families build their sports world around the bucket. It's not just a guy's night out. You can bring your wife, you can bring your kids. We get a lot of groups in after games. Great place after the game. Kids love to come here. The Rusty Bucket Restaurant and Tavern. The Rusty Bucket is a proud supporter of the Capitol Crusaders. Visit us after the game at 2158 East Main Street and grab life by the bucket. Welcome back to the Capitol Center. Before we get into the interview, I did want to mention, obviously, both teams uh, wearing pink out there today. It is a Breast Cancer Awareness Day here at the Capitol Center, so see a lot of accessories for Marietta in terms of shoes and socks and headbands of the pink variety. Also uh, wearing special warm-up T-shirts as well that say hope, love, and cure on the front. Capitol wearing their pink jerseys uh, in the shorts you can see in their warm-ups as well. And I believe they will be wearing the unis during the game as well, but it may just be for warm-ups, so we'll see what uniforms they come out with, obviously. But I did want to mention that, and, you know, everyone out there affected by such an awful disease, we uh, have our thoughts and prayers with you and your families as well. Let's get into our interview. This is the Coach's Corner brought to you by Plank's Cafe and Pizzeria. We sat down with head coach Dixie Jeffers who rejoins us in the coach's corner as we reflect on Saturday a little bit and talk about things to come in uh, this matchup here today. And we're joined once again by head coach Dixie Jeffers. Coach, let's take it back to Saturday. Pretty big day here between the reunion of your team and the game itself. I'll start with the reunion. What was it like being out there again with a team that you had so much success coaching and seeing everybody, you know, growing up and everything. Uh, what was crazy is we haven't been around one another. For some of us, it's been a lot of years. Yeah. And But when we went to the reception, it was like no time had ever passed. And the story started, you know, and it, it was fantastic. It uh, was just really good to catch up with everybody and talk about everybody's kids and where they're at now and what everybody's doing. And, it was a great turnout, and it was a great tribute to unbelievable young women. Yeah, and we saw them kind of come over to the bench as well and talk to the team, so it's kind of cool kind of passing the torch almost. The game itself, I mean, what can we say? It was a pretty good game, I would say. Uh, you know, everything kind of went right for us. The outside shooting was really good in that game. They were giving us open shots. We took them, and uh, you had to be pleased mm -hmm. with what you saw out there. I'm pleased. I'm pleased with where we have been. Um, you know, we didn't play bad at High Northern. We just picked the most inopportune times not to execute. So we've been playing good basketball for about the last three weeks. We're just playing better basketball. And we need to stay in the level of intensity with the energy that we have and the unselfishness of how we're playing together. We need to stay in that moment. Next up is Marietta tonight, th game three of the homestand. Like you said, we've been playing really well here. The last kind of stinker, I guess, was the Marietta game on the road. Marlo Taylor went off. And just kind of had a you know a ceiling game for herself. Probably won't see that tonight, but they do have some very capable players on this team. And you guys are kind of a target now. Is that fourth seed? A lot of teams right behind us chasing us, trying to get that home game in the first round. So kind of a different mindset now these last few weeks. You know, we control our own destiny, and um, that game down there, uh, for some reason, we we should have just saved our money and never gotten <laughs> off the bus because we didn't get off the bus, and. Who knows tonight? We may come out and do the same thing. I don't think we will. Um, Marlo Taylor had a great game down there, but we left them wide open. So we're definitely going to have to play defense tonight. Um, like I said, I like the place that the team is in. I like the mindset of where everybody's attitudes are and the effort that we've had in practices and so forth. Um, 
you know, we got two more weeks after this. So we control where we fit, and we can let other people control our destiny, or we can control our own. Well, let's talk about Cassie Bosch. She's she's been playing out of her mind. Uh, all of a sudden, it's a three point shooter for us, and. Uh, just her leadership, when she's out there on the floor, there's a huge difference than when she's out there on the bench and her minutes are going up as a result, obviously. What kind of leadership is she bringing to your club as that, as that senior? It seems like she's the real one that everybody's railing around. Well, we've talked to all five seniors about, you know, there is no tomorrow. You might want to step up and start to perform. I think if we look at Ellie Watchman, I think Ellie is, is yeah. playing at a really high level right now. Cassie's obviously playing at a high level. Reagan is starting to be Reagan of the last year. And so she's waking up. Sam hits a three. Yep. <laughs> you know? And so um, our seniors are playing extremely well. And that's what it's going to take. It's how far. We will go as far as what our senior class wants to do. And the team rallies around them. We have um, really have missed the floor general. That consistency out on the floor. I think I see the seniors now saying, no, no, no. Come on, come on, come on. And that's what we've been looking for. Yeah. And um, if they're going to wake up, what a good time of the year to wake yeah. up. I always say this about Reagan. Every game it seems like she's right there at a double-double. And you, there's no moment of her game that really sticks out, but she's just so she's solid. She's steady like Eddie. That. Yep. And by the end of the game, there's 8-8 eight and eight right there on the, on the score sheet every time. And so. I, I don't mention Addie Becker, too, because yep. um, Addie's, Addie's very intelligent about the game, and her injuries have really limited her what she can do. Yeah. But she's intelligent. She understands the game. And when Addie opens up her mouth, she says really good things. And yep, you, like you said, uh, you can. There's been a difference the last few weeks. You can see it from the outside. You know, being up away from you guys, you can you can definitely see there's a different play from you guys. So hopefully it continues here. We've got a big game this weekend as well. So hopefully we're not looking ahead at that one. I'm sure that message was communicated, but um, that's After always out there. After how we played against Marietta last time, yeah. trust me, we're there, only yeah. focusing on tonight. That's true. You got the revenge <laughs> game on your mind as well. So hopefully it's a win today. We wish you luck this weekend as well. And uh, you got a couple more home games in this month as well. So we'll catch up with you then. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Thanks again to Head Coach Dixie Jeffers for joining us as part of the Coach's Corner. And is once again brought to you by Planks Cafe. Well, let's talk about this one here today. It's, it's an interesting matchup. As you go back to the first matchup, Coach said there, and it's always good for a quality sound bite in that interview, and said they never got off the bus. They should have just saved their money. And uh, she would be accurate based on the scoreboard from the first and second quarter. And Capital was outscored 44-21 to 21 in the first half. They were never in the game, never got back in it. Their first quarter shooting was 4 for 17, Obviously, that is just not going to get anything done. And uh, the other team, Marietta, 6 for 11 at 54% versus 23%. You go to the second quarter, that's when Marlo Taylor started lighting everything up. They shot 62% in the second quarter. Capital shot 4 of 13, and that's a 30% clip as well. So they made only eight field goals of their first 30 attempts, 26%, and by the time they got back into the locker room at halftime, the game was over. Obviously a much different situation here today. Capitals playing really good basketball. It is the same starting five available for the Crusaders uh, as they had in the first matchup with Marietta. So in that Otterbein game we talked about, it was kind of completely different players, but that's not the case in this game. Uh, as Emma Burns played 28 minutes, Watchman played 21, Bosch played 25, Taphorn played 20. I know those numbers don't sound high, but that's because this game was over in the fourth quarter and uh, they didn't play in that fourth quarter. They played three minutes each. Uh, Coach also mixed up who started off that third quarter as well. Reagan Stonerock was in foul trouble in the, at, at halftime as well. and. It was just a, a really bad game. I said a stinker in that interview, and, and that's the perfect explanation for it. So today we'll determine if that was an outlier or not. Uh, in terms of three-point shooting, again, Marietta went 11 for 19. Marlo Taylor went 9 for 12. Marlo Taylor is not exactly known as a three-point shooter. 31% this season is what she's shooting from three. And if you take out the capital game in which she went 9 for 12, I just said, she's 15 for 65 at 23% on the season. And that's not a knock to Marlow. Obviously had a great game, and, you know, kudos to her. And she is a starter and a quality player on this team, averaging double figures. But the fact that she made 
nine of 12 threes. Uh, really shows you what kind of breakdown Capital was having defensively. As Coach said, she was wide open, knocking down threes. And, uh, you know, even if she's a 31% three-point shooter, if you leave her wide open, she's going to knock down shots. So that is something to point out. This team usually shoots 26% from three, and the game against Capital is 57%. So a, a very much a ceiling game for Marietta. They came out and had one of their best games they've played all season. Capital played one of their worst games all season. And you put those two factors together, and it turns into a blowout loss on the road. So I think we're going to see a really motivated Capital team in this one. And uh, setting the table, brought to you by Pepsi, I think everyone is focused on turning this around from that first matchup and coming out and playing really stout defense. I think that's what we're going to see at the start of this one. But, you know, sometimes teams just have your number. Hopefully this is not one of those cases today in the matchup between Marietta and Capital. Seven minutes from tip-off. We'll be right back with the keys to today's game. Hi. They said I couldn't. So I built a plane, then a spaceship, then I went to the moon. I invented jazz, hip-hop, rock and roll. Some called it noise. I said it was music. I wrote a letter and sent it by ponies. It didn't get to you fast enough, so I used trucks and ships. But still, they weren't fast enough for me. So I lost the paper and the ink. I sent it by magic. I called it email. I made up new words. Jukebox, bling, Google. And I decided some old words weren't okay to say ever again. The mustache. I tried to bring that back 17 times. I wore knickerbockers and shoulder pads, poodle skirts and flannel. When I came back from World War II, all I had was a t-shirt. So I made that cool. In fact, I invented cool. Who am I? I'm the spirit of youth. It's my job to move the world forward. Pepsi. Every generation refreshes the world. With 14 TVs to watch your favorite team or the next big event, Plank's Cafe and Pizzeria in German Village is ready for you and your group today. Plenty of free parking, free Wi-Fi, banquet rooms for private parties and daily specials. What more reason do you need to visit Plank's Cafe and Pizzeria? Plank's is located at 743 Parsons Avenue and has been serving the Columbus community since 1939. Planks is on the web at plankscafe.com or available by phone at 614-443-6251. Planks Cafe and Pizzeria is a proud supporter of Crusader Athletics. We continue along on the Freshies pregame show, and it is time for the keys to today's game, brought to you by Marriott, Marriott Columbus Airport. Boy, I, I nailed the keys. I'm going to toot to my own horn here a little bit, and I absolutely crushed it on Saturday, so the outside shooting for capital would be the difference in that game. And sure enough, Cassidy Bosch started off on fire. Emma Burns pitched in a few. And Capital knocks in eight threes, ties for a season high. And they shoot 42% while doing it. Sam Seck and Erica Linder each hit a three in the game off the bench as well. And crushed it. So let's go two for two and keep the streak going myself here. I think, like I said before the break there, defense is going to be the key in this one. Can Capital, one, maintain that ball pressure that they kept on Otterbein? They were uncomfortable even just crossing half court here on Saturday. And I think a lot of that's going to go into what the Crusaders do defensively here in this one. Marietta came out and scored over 80 against Capital, and that's something they've done a few times this season. The 84 points they scored was tied for the third highest that they've scored this season. The most they've scored is 85. So... Again, they pretty much had one of the best games they're going to have this season last time out. I think we're going to see an angry Capital team come out and just hound Marietta defensively and use that transition to take over an early lead in this game. And I'm expecting to see what we saw in the Otterbein game, and that's that the other team was never really in the ball game. I think Marietta, Marietta is going to get dominated today by Capital's defense. They're going to win a low-scoring game, or at least... Marietta won't be scoring 80. I think they'll score around 50 in this one, if you ask me, the way Capital's been playing defensively. And I think the extra little motivation from that last timeout is going to be evident in this one. Three and a half minutes till tip. We will cut it for the Freshies pregame show. We'll have our national anthem here in-house in a few minutes. And afterwards, we will bring you our starting lineups for today's matchup and get to basketball here at the Capitol Center. We thank you for turning in to the Freshies pregame show, and uh, we'll see you in a few minutes here for tip-off.
your purpose? Not in a refuge from the real world. The university anchored in the center of Ohio is at the epicenter of possibility, purpose, and the power of purple. There's no time for hesitation here. No need to put things neatly in their boxes. Just the need to nurture the role you were born for, no matter who you are. We believe that engagement is as important as education, that curiosity is as important as the classroom. And when given the chance, we do more, not less. Dill's Greenhouse is a local family business dedicated to offering the best shopping experience and honest prices for your gardening needs. If you're in need of annuals, perennials, vegetable plants, or any variety of gardening tools and resources, Dill's Greenhouse is more than happy to get you on the right path. Dill's Greenhouse is located at 5800 Rager Road in Groveport, Ohio and is open seven days a week. Visit them online for more information at dillsgreenhouse.net. Dill's Greenhouse. Only nature does it better. Army ROTC is one of the best leadership courses in the country and can be a part of your college curriculum. As a potential or current student at Capital University, learning to become a leader will make your college experience even richer and prepare you for the future. Capital Army ROTC can provide scholarships and many more benefits to those who enroll, but the biggest benefit will be experienced firsthand after joining. For more information on Capital Army ROTC, testimonials, and an in-depth look at what the program can offer you, go to www.capital.edu slash ROTC. This is a message for all those MBA seekers out there. For the junior exec who'd rather be senior. For the VP yearning to be CEO. And for everyone who'd call their job not just a profession, but a passion. Capital University's MBA program was built exclusively for professionals, experienced faculty, flexible schedules, and classmates you'll soon consider colleagues. Learn more at capital.edu slash MBA. The Capital University MBA, for those driven to do more. Capital University presents The Good Guarantee. The Good Guarantee promises families who work for nonprofits or in public service will never have to pay more than 50% tuition based on their total amount of financial aid. This includes your talent, merit, and need-based aid. You can live on campus or at home. It's renewable for up to eight semesters, and you can study any major and minor. Current students can apply, too. You qualify if you or your spouse or your parent or guardian work for a nonprofit or public service organization, and you are a full-time undergrad. Because we want to create purposeful people, courageous community, and hopeful humanity. The world needs more good. The world needs you. You invest in others. We invest in you. For more information, visit capital.edu slash good guarantee. Lunch, the most unappreciated meal of the day. Which is why we at Freshy are screaming from the rooftops, let there be lunch. And no, not a sad sandwich at your desk. We're talking a flavorful Tex-Mex burrito after a brisk walk. Or a nutritious kale Caesar with your work bestie. So let's do our minds, bodies, and taste buds a favor and let there be lunch. Download the game-changing new Freshy app to have your food ready or order at Freshy.com. This is a message for all those MBA seekers out there. For the junior exec who'd rather be senior. For the VP yearning to be CEO. And for everyone who'd call their job not just a profession, but a passion. Capital University's MBA program was built exclusively for professionals, experienced faculty, flexible schedules, and classmates you'll soon consider colleagues. Learn more at capital.edu slash MBA. The Capital University MBA, for those driven to do more. 
Dill's Greenhouse is a local family business dedicated to offering the best shopping experience and honest prices for your gardening needs. If you're in need of annuals, perennials, vegetable plants, or any variety of gardening tools and resources, Dill's Greenhouse is more than happy to get you on the right path. Dill's Greenhouse is located at 5800 Rager Road in Groveport, Ohio and is open seven days a week. Visit them online for more information at dillsgreenhouse.net. Dill's Greenhouse, only nature does it better. Welcome back to the Capitol Center, or welcome in if you're just joining us. Marietta in town, a big one for both teams here tonight. As Marietta comes in at 5 and 7, Capitol coming in at 6 and 6. And currently they have their, they are controlling their own destiny in terms of being a home team in the OAC playoffs. So we'll see if that comes to fruition in this matchup here today. As we get to tonight's starting lineups here, brought to you by Dill's Greenhouse. Dill's Greenhouse, only nature does it better. For the Marietta College Pioneers, led by head coach Cole Vivian, assisted by Maggie Miller, Jenna o. Taylor, had 33 points in this matchup back on January 15th, and she is not getting the start tonight for Marietta. And that's an interesting matchup to see when she comes off the bench. Again, 33 was a complete ceiling game for Marlo Taylor. And she was just the hot hand in that first matchup. Capital in that first matchup. And boy, since that game, Capital's been playing their best basketball of the season. The next game out was against John Carroll here at home. Capital took that game to the buzzer literally just couldn't come up with one more basket at the end but they took the momentum from that fourth quarter and they have gone on a nice tear here they've won now three of four and the one loss was on the road by three points they have blown out opponents here at home the last two times out Muskingum 91-64 Otterbein on Saturday 74-58 we have a travel before the basket here from Enix to start off today Obviously, Capital wearing the pink uniforms here for their breast cancer awareness game. And Marietta does have some pink accessories as well. You'll see the socks, headbands, etc. on the other side, but mostly wearing their Navy uniforms here in this one. Emma Burns will start off the offense here for Capital here tonight. Passes off to Taphorn. Taphorn looking for help. Inside, Watchman's wide open. Misses the layup, but she cleans it up nicely and gets Capital on the board 2-0. Now in the transition game, they're trying to get it across the court. That was pretty evident. A, a carry really could have been called against Brooks there, but it wasn't. Pass goes inside now to Hefner. Hefner had a big game as well. First meeting, 23 points. On the outside, Enix steps back. Skip pass. Three ball from Congrove is good. Alex Enix is the best player on this Marietta team, the 6'1 senior out of Beverly, Ohio. We are used to seeing her here, and she has had a strong senior campaign, averaging 13 points per game, leading the Pioneers with 4.8 rebounds as well. 3-2 Marietta out in front. Watchman delivers over to Cassidy Bosch, who was named the Crusader of the Week for the week she had last week. Taphorn has a long two. It's not going to count. Charge is going to be called on the drive there against Watchman. Actually, that's Stone Rock, excuse me, who was called for the charge. Taphorn playing full court pressure here on the ball handler. We saw this against Otterbein, and it worked very well, disrupting the offensive flow for the other, other side. Enix with a really good pass into the paint. Hefner looking for help, almost the five seconds, throws it away. And Congrove has it now, eight to shoot. Enix again at the top of the key, delivers off. Driving in is Brooks, back to Enix, a three, no good. And a really good defensive sequence there from Capital. Caroline Taphorn running the floor. Passes into the corner now to Cassidy Bosch. Trying to get a pass into Watchman, who's being fronted. So they are unable to get a pass there, and Hefner now gets the switch off. They had a mismatch. Enix will now find Watchman defensively. Here's Stone Rock on the right elbow, driving into traffic. That ball is swatted away by Camille Cummins, and it goes out of bounds. 
They're going to reset the shot clock here to four seconds. They're going to say there was no change in possession here. Now there's a discussion, and they will put four seconds on the shot clock. So it wasn't a turnover. Capital very aware of the situation here. Has to get a quick shot off. And a foul is called on Marietta. That is on number 14. That'll be Devin Hefner picking up the foul. And that's actually a gift to Capital as it resets the shot clock now to 20 seconds. Capital can just inbound and run a set here. Tap horn gets it to Burns. And again, if there was four on the shot clock here, Capital would be in some real trouble. So they benefit from the foul. Tap horn keeps her pivot foot. And works it around to Burns now by way of Watchman. Burns trying to screen and roll with Watchman. Defended well by the Pioneers. Now only five to shoot, and then a layup from Bosch, no good. Watchman gets the rebound, an offensive one to reset the shot clock as well. 13 to X now for Capital again. Taphorn, one on one, kick out, Burns. No shot there, she drives in, floater, no good. And what a sequence from the Pioneers withstanding a minute of Capitals offense. And they'll head down the floor with the lead. Three ball, no good from Congrove. And after a quick offensive sequence, they try to pace this thing up. And Capital, once again, will slow it down. 3-2, get a little chess match here early on. Marietta leads. Stone Rock to Bosch. Coming around the screen is Burns. Marietta has been very good defensively early on. Kick out to Taphorn, has room for a long two, and she knocks it down. Taphorn now in the midcourt. Wanted some kind of call there from the official, maybe a push off. Now driving in is Hefner. Goes for the reverse layup. Now into a double team and a great find as opening up on the weak side was Cummings. No one slid over, and Marietta gets the lead right back. Taphorn dribbling to a spot on the left wing. She drives baseline, floating over Enix, no good, and Enix gets the rebound. Marietta now still trying to run this pace up. Taphorn pokes it free. That's gonna be a jump ball. And Caroline Taphorn creates a turnover. Checking in now is Jordan Kaiser. She's a 5'8 guard out of Dover. She replaces Jill Congrove. Early stats in this one, Capitals two for six from the field, Marietta two for four. Each team with one turnover, Capital winning the lead rebounding battle four to two. Taphorn and Watchman each with two, Congrove and Cummings each, actually Congrove has three, Cummings two, and it's a 5-4 game early on. Burns gets it to Bosch. They're gonna call a screen, an illegal screen. And that is against Ellie Watchman. So Ellie picks up her first. Fortunately, not on Reagan there. And both of the bigs for Capital have picked up a foul here in the first five minutes. Taphorn takes it away and an easy basket and she's fouled on top of that. What a play by Taphorn, but now she's down, grabbing her right ankle. And hopefully she is okay. Caroline Taphorn single-handedly making a play on that ball, taking it away. She appears to be okay. She's tying her right shoe and was grabbing her ankle. But she looks to be okay. No training, no training staff on the court. Coach Jeffers comes to take a look and Taphorn walking it off. I don't know if she knows that she was fouled or if Capital took a timeout here. And that's exactly what happened. Coach Jeffers takes a timeout to allow Taphorn to collect herself. So a 30 time, 30 second timeout, we'll be right back. Of the best leadership courses in the country and can be a part of your college curriculum. As a potential or current student at Capital University, learning to become a leader will make your college experience even richer and prepare you for the future. Capital Army ROTC can provide scholarships and many more benefits to those who enroll, but the biggest benefit will be experienced firsthand after joining. 
For more information on Capital Army ROTC, testimonials, and an in-depth look at what the program can offer you, go to www.capital.edu slash ROTC. I wanted to... So Taphorn heads to the line. Still working on that right foot. She took away an inbound pass there, and she has been so good defensively in the transition game, and that ankle might be bothering her. She rushed, that, rushed the free throw, but she does lead all scorers with four, and they're going to test her immediately here. She's still guarding the ball handler, Bailey Brooks. Brooks gets a screen, now actually hands it off to Cummings, and now trying to get to the basket is Hefner. Really good defense here from Bosch. And they wanted a five-second call there. Now it goes into the corner, tiptoeing the baseline, kick out, and they're going to run out of time. Hefner's got to shoot that basketball. With two seconds on the shot clock, she refused, and it's an easy move for Capital to get the shot clock violation. Three subs coming on. It is Mackenzie Campbell, as well as number 21, Aaron Hahn, and number 32 as well, that's Luz Doritza. And Capital will make their first substitution with Linder replacing Taphorn. Taphorn usually, rotational-wise, is in there the whole first quarter or most of it. She comes out earlier than normal, and this is probably part of the ankle just to give her some extra time to recover. Oh, that ball out of bounds. Really good move defensively from Hahn stepping in there. Actually, that was Kaiser, excuse me, on the other side. And Linder puts it on the deck, and it hits the end line. Now a long two from Hefner. No good. That's going to be a jump ball. Watchman, Bosch in the area, but the rebound is collected by Mackenzie Campbell. Campbell 5'11 forward out of Middlefield, Ohio. The inbound goes to Aaron Hahn now. Around a screen, Hefner looking for Hahn posting up. She goes outside with it instead. Kaiser drives in, and now a traveling violation called against Hefner. She knew it. Devin Hefner is having some trouble in this one. 23 points in the first matchup I mentioned earlier. She's got a couple of turnovers in this game and has not found a basket yet. Burns brings it up for Capital. They lead 6-5 in a low-scoring slugfest right now. Linder to Brooke Amert, fresh into the game, replacing Stone Rock. Kaylee Cyphers is also in there as Burns now gives it away with a travel herself. Haley Ross checks in now, the freshman out of Aurora, Ohio. No Marlo Taylor. Still from Marietta, and you wonder if there's a, an injury situation now with Marlow. Open shot, Hahn, no good. Actually, that was Kaiser, excuse me, with the miss there off the front of the rim. 3.52 left, and it's still just a 6-5 game. A little bit lower scoring than the first time these two teams met. Similar kind of scoring from Capital, I guess, in the first quarter as they had some trouble getting off the butts, as Coach says. Strong take here by Cassidy Bosch, and she gets it to go. Marlo Taylor, for what it's worth, played 31 minutes last game out for Marietta, so there's no sign of an injury based on that knowledge. She did shoot one of nine in the game. Maybe that's part of it. Hard to speculate. 8-5, meanwhile, Cassidy Bosch takes it away. Another cause turnover here for Capitals defense. And now it goes into the corner to Burns. Burns, inside pass, a little bit too much English on it, trying to get it to Brooke Amert, and now Amert causes a travel. Marietta just coughing it up right now. That is their seventh turnover in this game. Burns comes out, Taphorn back in. That's actually the eighth turnover for Marietta. So they have five points and eight turnovers in the first quarter, and it's only seven minutes in. Amert screens for Bosch. 
Top of the key, it's Cypher. She thought about a three. Gives it off to Linder instead. Linder around two screens from Cypher. Drives in, has a good look, left it short. Rebound by Kaiser, and then she throws it away. That is nine turnovers now. I'm starting to uh, get the keys to the game pretty dead on. I gave myself a lot of credit for the outside shooting prediction. On Saturday, Capital made their most three-pointers that they've made in a game this season with eight, tying a season high. And then sure enough, I said today, defense would be the key for Capital, and they would come out and just hound the ball carrier up the court, and here we go again. It's tipped this time by Tapporn. She's saying that it was tipped off of Marietta, and they actually are going to talk about this. And they're going to give Capital the basketball. So Tapporn causes yet another turnover. That's 10 turnovers in the first quarter for Marietta. And they are playing one of their best defensive basketball games we've seen and clearly motivated by the result of the last game. And everyone, fortunately for Capital, has a fresh memory and is not thinking about that last matchup at all. Maybe they are, and you're using this motivation. Xenix gets the miss from Cyphers. Three ball to tie it up. In and out. That was halfway down on the shot from Haley Ross. Linder will bring it up the floor for Capital. Slowing things down again. Just five points scored so far for the Pioneers. They are two of seven from the field with ten turnovers. That one's going to stay here. Checking back in is Bailey Brooks, and Watchman will come in for Capital as well, replacing Cyphers. One forty-five to play, 13 on the shot clock. First quarter of action, Capital leading 8-5, to five, dominating defensively, but still only find themselves up by three. They haven't exactly lit the world on fire on the offensive end themselves. Watchman trying to change that, and at the shot clock buzzer, banks it home. 10-5 now, Capital out in front. Marietta hasn't made a shot in five minutes. Another turnover. Checking back in is Devin Hefner. Since their last basket, there have been eight turnovers from Marietta here in about five minutes. Going back through the game log, they've taken two shots in the last five minutes due to eight turnovers. A quick foul was picked up there in transition for Marietta. This one's going to stay here. Wow. Wow. What a dominant performance defensively in this first quarter. Taphorn, a long shot, no good. Rebound, Enix goes up and gets it from everybody. Almost another turnover as Burns pokes it free. Jill Congrove with it. And almost another turnover. Instead, it turns into a three. No good. Great offensive rebound. Oh, travel something there. Another turnover. Capital has possession. This is getting sloppy now, but they take it away. So now that's 0 for 3 shooting. With nine turnovers in the last 6-12 of the quarter. Capital trying to add one more basket here from the free throw line. Tap horn, won't get the roll. Rebound collected by Devin Hefner. Hefner with three to shoot. She traveled. She traveled before the pass. Unbelievable. Another turnover from Marietta. Pass goes in. Amert from half court. Left it way short. 
A dominant quarter defensively for Capital. Marietta hasn't scored in 6-12. They're 0 for 3 from the field with 10 turnovers in that span. Great 6-0 run to end the quarter. Capital up 10-5. We'll be right back. It's the perfect sports bar because it's not just a sports bar. I'm Gary Calico, founder and president of Rusty Bucket. A lot of families build their sports world around the bucket. It's not just a guy's night out. You can bring your wife. You can bring your kids. We get a lot of groups in after games. Great place after the game. Kids love to come here. The Rusty Bucket Restaurant and Tavern. Life by the Bucket. The Rusty Bucket is a proud supporter of the Capitol Crusaders. Visit us after the game at 2158 East Main Street and grab Life by the Bucket. Just some more numbers from this first quarter. Jimmy Bloomfield here with you. Capital leading 10-5. 12 turnovers from Marietta overall in the first quarter. I mentioned the, the terrible drought that they've been on here in the last 6-12. If you look at their shot selection, they have taken eight shots on the game, and six of them are from three. So they're not even trying to get high percentage shots at this point. Devin Hefner had four turnovers herself. Alex Enix had two. Capital, meanwhile, shot five of 14, 35% versus the 28 from Marietta. They got six more shots up. And Capital will keep this thing going. At the top of the key, it's Taphorn driving left side. Now popping back out. Looking for Stone Rock. Stone Rock now gives off to Bosch. Bosch inside, right elbow. Starting five out there for Capital. Caroline Taphorn led all scorers with four, tied with Watchman in that first quarter. Three ball from Bosch, no good. And Stone Rock gets another offensive rebound. Pass down low, a little bit too high from Taphorn. And it's a turnover for Capital. But they should win the turnover battle in this one. <laughs> it's still a plus six. And this is going to be another takeaway. Taphorn takes the ball away. Taphorn now with three steals already. Stone Rock had it stripped, stays with it. Taphorn, Watchman facing up. And she gets mugged. There's going to be a timeout call by Capital to save the possession. Coach Jeffers, I don't know if she wanted that timeout or not, but Capital will keep possession. Taphorn took it. We'll take another timeout. It's for all those NBA seekers out there. For the junior exec who'd rather be senior. For the VP yearning to be CEO. And for everyone who'd call their job not just a profession, but a passion. Capital University's MBA program was built exclusively for professionals, experienced faculty, flexible schedules, and classmates you'll soon consider colleagues. Learn more at capital.edu slash MBA. The Capital University MBA, for those driven to do more. Capital breaks huddle here after the timeout, leading 10-5. Over seven minutes now without a basket for Marietta with 11 turnovers in that stretch. Taphorn gets it in, Burns for three, no good. Taphorn gets the long rebound. Capital now with four offensive rebounds, but they turn it over, and this could end the drought. Hefner's fouled, I guess, from behind by Cat, oh, should be by Bosch. They haven't signaled the number yet. I guess we're just going to go with Cassidy there. Hefner to the line. This will end potentially the scoring drought for Marietta as the first free throw is good, but they still have not made a field goal to end that drought. But points are points, and they trail now 10-6. Long pause in between free throws as Watchman was adjusting her jersey, it looked like. Free throw from Hefner is good. Hefner, a very good free throw shooter on the season at 85%. Burns having some trouble, but collects herself. Stone Rock offers assistance with by way of a screen. Bosch to Watchman. Now he gives off to Burns now. Emma has not gotten involved in the offense, and for Capital, not a lot of players have. Just three players have scored. 
Bosch has two points. Taphorn and Watchman each have four. Now here we are, 11 and a half minutes in, and no player has more than four points. Defense is the story of the day so far. Stone Rock. Looking into the corner, now comes back up top to Bosch. Burns turned her head, Watchman saves it. And another turnover. And then Marietta almost throws it away. Hefner has it again. She launches it into the corner. Collected by a foul call. That was driving Jill Congrove. Erica Linder checks in. Burns comes off. And for Marietta, number 32, Luz Doritza checks back in. Doritza checking in for Cummings. Still no Marlo Taylor, so the Marietta player, Taylor, who had 33 in the first matchup, we might not see her today. Rainbow three, no chance of going in. Way too strong off the backboard. Watchman gets the miss. We're over eight minutes now without a made basket from Marietta. Capital still only leads by three. They haven't exactly been sharp on the offensive end themselves. They go right back to the bread and butter with Watchman inside. Tip pass, Stone Rock comes away with it. Now Bosch drives in, layup, Watchman. They earn those two. Capital back up by five, which is their largest lead. Enix driving in on Watchman, left it short. Cleanup is good. Kenzie Campbell finally breaks the drought. And now a full court press here from Marietta. They take it away and then throw it away. Stone Rock now to tap point. Driving in left side. And she'll slow things down. What is going on with the shot clock? It doesn't matter as Washman <laughs> scores. It went from 29 to 20 all of a sudden. But Capital gets a quick basket anyway. Now driving in's Campbell again. She goes coast to coast and willed it in. Inbounded to Tap Horn. He goes back to Stone Rock. Back to Tap Horn as Capital works to break the press. They will. They have numbers now. Two on one. Bosch. Bounce pass. Watchman layup. Capital starting to cruise offensively. 16 11. But Marietta's pacing this thing up, which they needed to do. Tap Horn takes it away again. That's four steals in Caroline. An easy layup. 18 11. Tap Horn with six points and four steals. Capital leads by seven. Kick out three, no good, or no, no shot from Doritza. And instead she gets an easy walk-in layup. Well, all of a sudden both teams have found the offensive flow. It's 18-13. Capitals led by as much as seven. They are breaking this press, no problem. Thrown into the corner, however. Taphorn's calling for it. Marietta will switch to a man defense. They've been playing some zone in the first. Bounce pass, ricochets to Stone Rock. Now ricochets again outside to Bosch. Cassie drives left side. Gets a screen from Ellie. Baseline into Ellie. Ellie in traffic, they're gonna call a foul. That should be on 32 Doritza. Two shots for Ellie coming up. Linder and Taphorn come out. Allison Roach checks in. And actually, Linder's just getting some coaching here from Coach Jeffers. She will stay out there. First free throw from Watchman is good. Brooks checking back in. Looks like Amert is getting ready to come on for Watchman. Nineteen thirteen lead for the Crusaders. Watchman. Free throw. Good. Brooke will come on. Capital now showing a little bit of full court pressure. Allison Roach. Is the primary defender now. Brooks breaks her down, but goes right into Stone Rock, and Roach gets the rebound. 
run out to Linder, who wisely slows down. Bosch fakes the three, Roach coming around on the baseline, and now Amert opens up top of the key. Inside Stone Rock, double comes help to help, Marietta takes it away, and Enix runs up the floor. No numbers here for Marietta, Enix is gonna be called for charging. That was very obvious. Offensive foul called against Alex Enix, and that's her second. Checking in now for Marietta is Aaron Hahn, and Mariah Goddard, who checks in for the first time. Cassidy Bosch, very brave there to take contact from Alex Enix, who is listed at 6-1. And she was coming with a full head of steam. She heads off now, and Capital can really try to stretch this lead. Bosch, top of the key, her three got blocked. And it's collected by Hahn. Marietta brings it up the floor now next. Spotting up at the top of the key is Hahn. She gives off instead. Around the screen now is Goddard. Swings it back around. Hahn throws it away. 14, make it 16 turnovers. That's unbelievable. Marietta this season averages 18 a game. We still have four minutes until halftime. And they're at 16. What is this from Capital now trying to break the press? And they won't. Taken away by Marietta. That was very ugly looking from the Crusaders. And a foul is now called on Allison Roach. Well, they'll regroup. That was very sloppy trying to get that ball up the floor. And Coach Jeffers will bring Burns and Taphorn back in. A, a wise move, I would say, to get some better ball handling out there. It'll be inserted from under the basket. Now handed off to Kaiser. A deep three from Goddard, no good on that pull. And a fantastic tie up on both sides. Really a great play. Amert tied up with number 32, Luz Doritza. And Doritza will win possession due to the possession arrow. Pass goes straight in under the basket, layup good. And Luz Doritza with a really good sequence. Brings Marietta back within five. Capital much more crisp breaking down this press. They have four on one in the paint. Marietta does rebound and gets back in time. Now a zone look once again. Amert on the weak side was being held. That's going to be on the floor called against Brooks. Cyphers checks in now for Reagan Stone Rock. Pass goes into Emma Burns. 20 to 15 is our score. Burns absorbs a lot of contact there. She gets it off to Amert. Tap point to Amert. Read nicely there under the basket by Doritza. She's had a, a good few minutes now. And Marietta can cut this back to within one. One possession, that is. Right wing, pass inside. Somehow they get it out. Brooks with 10 to shoot. Feels like they've had the ball for an eternity to sequence. Amert tries the front, and Doritza with back-to-back -back baskets. Well, credit Marietta, the fact that they've had 16 turnovers and are still only down by three speaks a lot to the defense that they've played as well. But now they're starting to get into the foul situation. And free throws could be a premium. With the way both teams have played offensively, you get a free trip to the line, you better take advantage. And they foul Emma Burns, one of the better free throw shooters on the Capitol roster. Emma is at 75% from the line. Enix checks back in for Marietta, which is interesting given her two fouls. First free throw from Burns is no good. Bailey Brooks, another starter, also has two fouls on the other side. For Capital, no one with more than one, so that's good to see. A 
missed call there. Taphorn and the crowd letting the officials know it. 16 on the shot clock. On the top of your screen now is Brooks. Two players with two fouls in there for Marietta. Fadeaway shot, nice look from Camille Cummings and she knocks it in. 21-19, Marietta's within a basket. Foul called again, and Cyphers heads to the line. And Kaylee Cyphers, not a bad player to foul. She's eight for 12 this season. Checking in is Haley Ross. Cyphers misses the first. 21-19 remains the score. Cyphers goes 0 for 2. An empty trip at the line. That foul, by the way, was on Bailey Brooks, so she now has three. A developing situation. Pass goes into the corner now. And a foul is called once again. This time on Capital. It's going to be Amert. Oh, they're going to get Bosch, I guess. So for Cassidy, that's now two for her. She'll have to come off, and Sam Seck will come on. So one senior for another. Ross looking to inbound. Going up and getting it is Hefner. Hefner now goes into the paints, and a foul is called against Sec this time. That is the fourth for Capital, so one more will mean free throws on the other side. Hefner drives baseline, kick out, Enix. Hits Ross in the face, that was a perfect pass. Now thrown in front of Taphorn, who has to slow down to regain that ball. Now goes right back in, pass to Cyphers. Taphorn, playing out of her mind right now. 23-19, Caroline Taphorn, two rebounds, three assists, six points, four steals. And a foul is called against Emma Burns. Emma doesn't like it, that's her first. So Conrove goes to the line. 74% from the free throw line this season. Spins it in her right hand and throws up a miss. Two for three at the line now is Marietta. Capital, three for seven. Both teams actually shooting a pretty good percentage. This is kind of surprising. Both team is above 40%. You wouldn't expect that in a 23-19 game, but the play has just been very sloppy from a turnover standpoint. Capital has 11 when they average on the game 16.8, and there's been 17 now for Marietta, who averages 18.4. Basket good here from Emma Burns. Taphorn setting up another. All the offense has been through Caroline today. Ellie Watchman quietly has 12 points, but Taphorn has filled up the stat sheet everywhere. Now a three ball knocked down. Enix showing the long range and she pulls Marietta within two and now it's taken away. Enix for three in the lead, she's fouled. She's fouled by Amert on the three. And Marietta after a dreadful first half could take a lead here with 49 seconds remaining in the first half. Enix knocks in the first. Alex Enix, no doubt the leader of this team, has played and started 19 games this season. Leads the team with a 48% free field goal percentage. 13.2 points per game, also tops on the team. Second on the team with 24 blocks. Second on the team with 34 assists. Second on the team with 4.8 rebounds per game. Just completely fills up the stat sheet. 
and a 73% field free throw shooter and a 23% three-point shooter has just gone on a 6-0 run by herself to give Marietta a lead. And now Capital is fouled. Boy, that's a bailout call. Hef Hefner's called for the foul. That's going to be Devin Hefner's second. Make that Congrove. I don't know how that could have been on Congrove and not Hefner there, but that is the call. Maybe it was 24, not 14. I made the mistake, and I'm sure that's what it is. So Sam Seck heads to the line, the senior. Samantha Seck, 76% free throw shooter on the season. She knocks in the first and knocks in the second to give Capital the lead. Points are at a premium tonight, so any way you can get them, that's great. Marietta killing some time here. Trying to take the lead as Congrove has it with eight to shoot. Congrove dribbling into a no man's land. Now drops it and in block underneath by Taphorn. 10 seconds to work with for Capital. Shot clock turned off. Taphorn has it. Taphorn attacks the basket. Looking for help. Goes inside. Watchman has to throw it up. The pass to Cyphers was in time. Didn't look like Watchman was going to have enough time, but she did to find Cyphers. And Capital ends with an exciting 30 seconds. Taphorn the block. And then Watchman setting up Cyphers for a basket there to give Capital a 29-26 advantage here to end the half. Capital's defense stealing the show, but they still only lead by three. As we head into the Capital University ROTC halftime show, what if I could tell you to you could take a course, college course that is, that not only required textbooks, but courage, determination, and a good pair of boots. A course that would lead directly to a career as a leader, not an intern or assistant. Ready to become a student and a leader? Well, enroll in Capital University Army ROTC, and you could get a full tuition scholarship and graduate a leader and officer in the U.S. Army. To learn more about Army ROTC, call 614-236-6808. For more information, that is 614-236-6808 or go to capital.edu backslash ROTC to learn more about the Capital University Army ROTC. We do have a performance here at halftime from the color guard here at Capital, so I will go ahead and pop the mic down to there, and we'll get into our halftime show in just a bit.
Army ROTC is one of the best leadership courses in the country and can be a part of your college curriculum. As a potential or current student at Capital University, learning to become a leader will make your college experience even richer and prepare you for the future. Capital Army ROTC can provide scholarships and many more benefits to those who enroll, but the biggest benefit will be experienced firsthand after joining. For more information on Capital Army ROTC, testimonials, and an in-depth look at what the program can offer you, go to www.capital.edu slash ROTC. It's the perfect sports bar because it's not just a sports bar. I'm Gary Calico, founder and president of Rusty Bucket. A lot of families build their sports world around the bucket. It's not just a guy's night out. You can bring your wife. You can bring your kids. We get a lot of groups in after games. Great place after the game. Kids love to come here. The Rusty Bucket Restaurant and Tavern. Life by the Bucket. The Rusty Bucket is a proud supporter of the Capital Crusaders. Visit us after the game at 2158 East Main Street and grab Life by the Bucket. Lunch, the most unappreciated meal of the day, which is why we at Freshy are screaming from the rooftops, let there be lunch. And no, not a sad sandwich at your desk. We're talking a flavorful Tex-Mex burrito after a brisk walk or a nutritious kale Caesar with your work bestie. So let's do our minds, bodies, and taste buds a favor and let there be lunch. Download the game-changing new Freshy app to have your food ready or order at Freshy.com. Welcome back to the Capitol Center. Crusaders leading this one, 29-26 in some of the most peculiar stats I've ever seen at a halftime break. Let's dive in. First, 19 turnovers in the first half for, actually 17, the, the account treated out 19, my mistake, 17 turnovers for Marietta. And still, <laughs> a team that averages 18 coming in. Pretty incredible that somehow They've had 17 turnovers. Capital had 12 themselves. 29 total turnovers in the first half. And a big reason why Marietta and Capital are only separated by one possession. The, the more confusing number to me is the field goal percentage. Both teams, Capital is shooting 12 for 24 from the field. That's 50% obviously. Marietta is shooting 9 for 20, 45%. And both teams are under 30 points here at halftime. Sometimes it just doesn't add up. For Capital, individually, 12 points from Ellie Watchman in 12 minutes. That's pretty astounding. Two points from Cassidy Bosch. Four off the bench from Cyphers. Sam Sek knocked in two free throws. Emma Burns has three points. And Caroline Taphorn, six points, three assists, four steals, a block, and two rebounds as well. That's a pretty complete first half, if you ask me. On the other side, six points from Alex Enix, who scored those six points in about a span of 30 seconds to give Marietta the lead. She also has two steals. Four points from Cummins, four from Congrove, four from Campbell, and six from Luz Deritza off the bench. She has three steals and six points in eight minutes and a block as well. So the numbers are, frankly, just don't make sense. The fact that both teams are shooting above 42%. Both teams shooting above 45%, and we're sitting at a 29-26 game. This doesn't make sense, but it's been one of those nights here at the Capitol Center. Those stats are brought to you by Plank's Cafe and Pizzeria. Let's take a look at the OAC scoreboard now, once again, and always brought to you by the Army ROTC. We had some interesting games in OAC play tonight. The headliner, of course is the matchup for Ohio Northern to see if they're going to get into a three-team race with the two teams at the top. And uh, not a good story from Ada. If you're a Polar Bear fan out there, it's 36-17. Baldwin-Wallace all over Ohio Northern right now. On the road for Baldwin-Wallace as well. So it looks like Ohio Northern will not be in the contention for the top two. It's also good news for Capital if they're able to hang on and Ohio Northern loses. All of a sudden, Capital is just two games out of the number three seed in the uh, postseason play. Muskingum is not having their night as well. They are losing 49 to 29 to Mount Union. 49 first half points from Mount Union. How about that? It must be the night of the blowout here tonight. John Carroll, 38. Heidelberg, 18. That's a halftime score as well. And the last score, this one's actually a pretty close game that we can keep an eye on. Otterbein, 30. Wilmington, 26. 
Both of those teams fighting to stay in the top half of the OAC standings as they've come in both at five and seven. Well, the top is seemingly going to separate themselves further from the bottom here as everything's kind of going as planned. The favorites are all winning tonight. And uh, we'll see if that continues on. A uh, big win for Mount Union if they're able to hang on to this big lead to get back into the group of five win teams. For Capital, again, if they win, they pull within two games of Ohio Northern, it looks like, if results hold. So a lot to play for for Capital still in the second half. And not only could get the four seed, but maybe the three if things break our way down the stretch. Capital will have to steal a game from either John Carroll or Baldwin Wallace to probably do so, and potentially both. That'll be senior day, by the way, uh, Saturday the 15th against Baldwin Wallace here at the Capitol Center. We'll take another timeout. When we come back, we'll name our halftime hero. OSU Sports Medicine is a proud supporter of Crusader student athletes by providing sports health services for Capital University Athletics and Student Health Services. Through the work and care of team physicians and athletic trainers, it's the team behind your team. For all fans, if you're looking to improve your physical performance, recover from an injury, or stay active for a lifetime, the experts at Ohio State Sports Medicine are there for you. Visit sportsmedicine.osu.edu or call 366-4332. Today's halftime hero goes to Caroline Taphorn. Six points, four steals, three assists. She's doing it all out there and has led to some really easy baskets, just ripping the ball at half court. She's not allowing Marietta to get it in their sets and is a main focal point of a defense that caused 17 turnovers in that first half of play. So congratulations to Caroline, our halftime hero, brought to you by Freshies. Capital students, reminder, 10% off at Freshies. Eat, energize. We'll take one last break. When we come back, we'll revisit our keys to this one and get second half action underway. You are listening to the Army ROTC Halftime Show. Where will you live your purpose? Not in a refuge from the real world. The university anchored in the center of Ohio is at the epicenter of possibility, purpose, and the power of purple. There's no time for hesitation here. No need to put things neatly in their boxes. Just the need to nurture the role you were born for, no matter who you are. We believe that engagement is as important as education, that curiosity is as important as the classroom. And when given the chance, we do more, not less. It's the perfect sports bar because it's not just a sports bar. I'm Gary Calico, founder and president of Rusty Bucket. A lot of families build their sports world around the bucket. It's not just a guy's night out. You can bring your wife. You can bring your kids. We get a lot of groups in after games. Great place after the game. Kids love to come here. The Rusty Bucket Restaurant and Tavern. The Rusty Bucket is a proud supporter of the Capital Crusaders. Visit us after the game at 2158 East Main Street and grab life by the bucket. With 14 TVs to watch your favorite team for the next big event, Plank's Cafe and Pizzeria in German Village is ready for you and your group today. Plenty of free parking, free Wi-Fi, banquet rooms for private parties and daily specials. What more reason do you need to visit Plank's Cafe and Pizzeria? Plank's is located at 743 Parsons Avenue and has been serving the Columbus community since 1939. Planks is on the web at plankscafe.com or available by phone at 614-443-6251. Planks Cafe and Pizzeria is a proud supporter of Crusader Athletics. And welcome back to the Capital Center. Thanks for joining us for the Capital University ROTC Halftime Show. Last minute here, we will revisit the keys to the second half, and uh, I think it's more of the same. Who's going to take better care of the basketball and can Capital do something with a drought when they create it. There was a stretch 
for Marietta where they did not score a field goal in over eight minutes or any points in over seven. And Capital only had a 6-0 run during that time. They weren't able to build a huge lead, but they have been playing with the lead for most of the night. They lead 29-26. See what happens down the stretch here. The problem is for Marietta, they are also in some deep foul trouble. Three fouls for Bailey Brooks, who is a starter on this team. Two for Alex Enix and two for Jill Congrove. That's 60% of their starting five with two or three fouls. For Capital, Cassidy Bosch has two as well to keep an eye out on that. We invite you to follow along with us on Twitter at Cap Crusaders, at C-A-P Crusaders. That's the handle on Twitter. And we invite you to interact with the broadcast. You can tweet me at underscore J Bloomfield. 29-26, 9.48 to play, and here we go. Ellie Watchman with 14 points. Watchman and Taphorn have been the two big ones for Capital in this game. And they link up once again to give Capital a two possession lead. Brooks calling it out for Marietta. Fresh off a 17 turnover first half. Marietta works it around to the left wing. Coming around a screen now is Congrove. Congrove out to Enix. Enix will have to force one up for a three. Almost went in. Congrove offensive rebound. And they'll reset with a fresh 20. Enix, good pass inside. And now a two-point jump shot there from Devin Hefner, no good. Watchman gets the rebound for Capital. Brought up the floor now by Emma Burns. Burns. Gives off to Stone Rock. Stone Rock looked towards Tapport. Now goes back to Burns. Three ball from Emma. No good. Misses everything. And it lands in the hands of Bailey Brooks, who was just sitting there waiting for it. Congrove scoops it over to her left. And the low scoring game has continued as teams struggling for offense early on. Enix back to the basket. And Alex Enix with eight points. Trying to match Watchman in the post. Those two might have a good post battle to finish us off here tonight. Capital has four on five the other way. Taphorn's wide open. She refuses to shoot that three and dribbles in for a two and knocks it down. So Taphorn takes advantage of the open shot. Brooks now trying to beat her to the timeline and she does. Marietta breaks the pressure. Enix bounces it over now to Hefner. Hefner drives to the right side. Travel? Yes. Well, there's the first turnover of the second half for Marietta, and if anything like the first, there's going to be more of those to come. Brought up the floor now by Capital on the other side. Into Watchman off a tip pass. She's fouled. That foul will go against Cummings. One of the few Marietta players not in foul trouble as Camille picks up her first foul. Timeout called by Marietta before the time before the free throws. It's 33-28. A 30-second timeout for Marietta. It's the perfect sports bar because it's not just a sports bar. I'm Gary Calico, founder and president of Rusty Bucket. A lot of families build their sports world around the bucket. It's not just a guy's night out. You can bring your wife, you can bring your kids. We get a lot of groups in after games. Great place after the game. Kids love to come here. The Rusty Bucket Restaurant and Tavern. Life by the bucket. The Rusty Bucket is a proud supporter of the Capitol Crusaders. Visit us after the game at 2158 East Main Street and grab life by the bucket. This mess. 727 to play for the third quarter. One of two close games in OAC play tonight, and it's been the night of the blowout. As Baldwin Wallace cruising over Ohio Northern for now. Mountain Union cruising against Moskingham. More of the same for John Carroll against Heidelberg as Watchman misses the first free throw. Otterbein and Wilmington will be of interest as both these teams come in with five wins in conference play, Capital sitting at six, so 
The winner of that game theoretically would be right there with Capital as Watchman gets the rebound off the second miss. Capital has beaten Wilmington in the first matchup, so in theory, Capital would like to see them win so that Capital can beat the Quakers and win the head-to-head -head tie break. Pass goes into Burns. There's only three to shoot. She backs out and knocks down a three. Emma Burns from outside. Unbelievable. Burns, with no time left, just ran out and threw one up, and it went in, no doubt about it. Bit of a delay now as we try to resume play here. Not sure what the reasoning is behind this delay, but we will have some basketball. 7.02 to play. Capital leads by eight, which is their largest lead. That ball's thrown right to Cassidy Bosch on the inbound. 20 turnovers. That take it right back. For Capital now, that's 13. Actually, 19 for Marietta. I'm losing count with uh, the ridiculous number of turnovers we've seen in this game on both sides. Both coaches are going to have probably a fit about that after this game. Now a foul is called against Ellie. That is Ellie's second. Ellie will stay out there. Haley Ross checks in for the Pioneers. Marietta on the very eastern border of Ohio. Kind of a long trek to Columbus from Marietta. One of the longer trips for Capital. Fortunately for Capital, centrally located in the state. You know, you can't go too far as Stone Rock gets the rebound. Some of the trips for the Cleveland schools down to, you know, Wilmington. That can be a long trip. Bosch looking inside. Stone Rock has it instead. And now it's Burns on the left wing. Taphorn comes around a screen. Looks inside. Extra dribble to buy some time. And spinning towards the basket is Watchman hit in stride by Taphorn. Enix now will slow it down for Marietta. Waiting for some assistance. Now kicks it to Congrove. Three ball, no good. Enix offensive rebound. Bodies Watchman. Then throws up an air ball. And that's going to be a foul against Stone Rock as Camille Cummings is there on the weak side. That is Reagan's second, I believe. Yep. So two for each of the front court players for Capital. But we're midway through the third. And Coach Jeffers is going to ride her starting five here. It's no subs for Capital yet in this third quarter. It's been a good group for Capital. You might as well keep them together. And they have set the tone over this last little spurt of really good play from Capital. Good box out there from Watchman on the rebound. Gets it out to Bosch on a run out. Easy layup. 40-29, inbound pass gets knocked out of bounds by Stone Rock. Checking in now is Mackenzie Campbell. Campbell comes in for Brooks, who is able to avoid that fourth foul. Marietta looking for help. They have all five players on this side of the court. Enix dribbles into a trap. They're going to say it's off of Capital. They still have eight seconds to get across the timeline, so plenty of time. And they'll get across the timeline with no, pro with no problem. They do trail by 11, though. Capital has started to open this thing up. In the third quarter, starting to pull away, but Alex Enix is single-handedly keeping Marietta in it. She's the only person to score for the Pioneers in the second half as Capital was on a 9-2 run. Taphorn is left all alone at the top of your screen, driving on the left side. Kick out to Burns. That would be deep from anybody. She thought about it, but 
Instead, they work it inside. Cassidy Bosch, no good. Reagan Stonerock, offensive rebound. Finds Taphorn, left wing. Taphorn waiting for the clear out down low. Let's see who they try to set up. Bosch is coming around a screen. Watchman leaks out and knocks down the mid-range jumper. Now inbounded on the right side of your screen, bringing it across is Congrove. Congrove gets it across and gives off now to Mackenzie Campbell. Campbell now on the left wing. Cummings, Enix, just working it around the outside and Enix throws up a miss. Stone Rock hits the deck, no foul called and now we've got a wild scramble for this ball. That should be a jump and Marietta will get it. Surprised there was no foul there when Stone Rock hit the seat of her pants. Hefner checks back in. She had 23, I said this a few times in that second quarter. She had 23 in that first quarter, or in the first matchup, and she has been absolutely quiet today. Hefner 0 for 2, she's made two free throws, has two points, three rebounds. On the left side, under the basket, it's good from Alex Enix. Marietta off of this possession still. They're down by nine. And it's starting to feel like the game is being controlled by Capital. Not to say it wasn't early on, but the scoreboard's starting to reflect that more and more here throughout the third. That was almost a travel. Pass now downloaded to Ritza. And to Ritza is having a phenomenal game off the bench. That's now eight points to go with three steals for Luce to Ritza. Capital made some substitutions, by the way. Linder and Amert checking in. Taphorn out, Watchman out. So a real chance now for Marietta, as those have been the two key players for Capital. 26 points for those two combined. And we'll see what Capital does with this unit. They've relied heavily on their starting five tonight. Amert. Gets a pass out to Bosch somehow. Cassidy now drives in. And Capital slows things down. Just calm down here. Still up by six. No need to rush anything here. Burns moves to the left wing. Skip pass to Linder. She drives inside. And a block for Doritza. Doritza the player of the game so far for Marietta. With the effort she's given off the bench. Enix is right there with her. She's now at 12 points, starting to heat up quite a bit. And a run here for the Pioneers. They're within four, and Dixie turns right to her starters again as Burns gets hits in the face here. It's going to go against number 23, Jordan Kaiser. Burns appears to be okay. And Capital goes right back to their starting five with... Watchman and Taffhorn coming right back in. Coach Jeffers knows this one's really important and will not let it get away. Cyphers comes in for Stone Rock, meanwhile, as a late sub here. Capital has only played, excuse me, has only played 10 players in this game. Cyphers for three. No, left it short. And the rebound is collected by Kaiser. They've only played 10 players in this game. And Roach and Sec were in for a hot minute. Layup here from Hefner is good. I guess you heard me calling her out. It's a two-point game, folks. Marietta is going on a run and having their best few minutes of basketball here tonight. Taphorn throws it to traffic. Bosch gets it. Cyphers 
Watchman on the weak side. Enix is there to close out. And Capital resets. Taphorn looks to the sideline. Coach Jeffers calls out the play. Emma Burns with it. Off to Cyphers, left wing. Cyphers to Taphorn, top of the key. Four to work with. Inside, Watchman. That has been the combination tonight. Taphorn now with seven assists as she sets up Watchman, who's nine of 10 for the field with 20 points. Ellie Watchman's career high is 23. Her season high is 20. And she might hit that career high tonight. 44-40, more importantly, Capital regains a two possession lead. Deritza, oh, she's fouled by Cyphers. How about that matchup? 5-11, loose Deritza against 6-2, I believe. Yeah, 6-2, Kaylee Cyphers. And the battle is won by Deritza, who goes to the line and could have double figures herself. She needs one of these to get there. There it is. Four or five shooting, nine points, a block, and three steals. How about that for 12 minutes of action off the bench? Deritza this season averages 2.6 points per game. She's with 10 now. Enix is up to 14, by the way, on the other side. They split a pair at the line, does Deritza there. So Capital has a real opportunity now to regain control, push it to five with a basket. Tap point. Kick out, Burns, thought about the three, goes inside. That's a tough shot, no good, but it might have been a pass as it got in there to Watchman. Cypher sets Watchman back up. She misses there, rebound, Enix. Forty-four, forty-one. Marietta can tie it here this possession, but they haven't been particularly good from three tonight. Two for 12, and they throw it away. Just the third turnover of the quarter, but it comes at a big time. 44-41, seven seconds to work with. Burns, it's poked free. Three seconds now. Burns will have to throw it up. She's bailed out by a foul. And actually, Marietta had, had fouls to get. So that is not a bad foul at all, as it leaves 1.1 seconds on the clock. Not a bad foul at all. And now they call another foul with one to give. And I don't think that's what they had in mind by using their foul to give there. As that changes nothing. Normally we would wait for an inbound and then do the quick foul. It goes into Watchman, whose shot is blocked at the buzzer. 44-41, shaping up to be a, a great finish here from the Capitol Center. We'll be right back. Fly. They said I couldn't. So I built a plane, then a spaceship, then I went to the moon. I invented jazz, hip hop, rock and roll. Some called it noise. I said it was music. I wrote a letter and sent it by ponies. It didn't get to you fast enough, so I used trucks and ships. But still, they weren't fast enough for me. So I lost the paper and the ink. I sent it by magic. I called it email. I made up new words jukebox, bling, Google. And I decided some old words weren't okay to say ever again. And the mustache. <laughs> I tried to bring that back 17 times. I wore knickerbockers and shoulder pads, poodle skirts and flannel. And when I came back from World War II, all I had was a t-shirt. So I made that cool. In fact, I invented cool. Who am I? I'm the spirit of youth. It's my job to move the world forward. Pepsi. Every generation refreshes the world. Well, we'll set the scene. Fourth quarter action coming your way. Crusaders lead 44-41. And they go right back to their starting five as Stone Rock will check back in. Starting five out there for both teams, which is surprising with the way that Deritza has played. And she starts off on the bench, but... Both teams leaning heavily on their starters. This is anybody's ball game as we enter the final 10 minutes. And some hounding defense starting from the Pioneers. Bosch tried to kick it inside. 
No kicked ball called as it hit off the leg of a Pioneer player. And play on, says our officials, so we do just that. Enix has it in the corner, guarded by Watchman. I guess didn't step out of bounds. Kicks it over to Aaron Hahn now. Driving is Congrove, a foul called against Capital. Aaron Hahn is out there in the lineup for Marietta, actually, in the spot of Bailey Brooks, who has three fouls. The only change from the starting five of both sides. Camille Cummings will check back in for Marietta here as Congrove makes both at the line. Hahn is out, Cummins is in. Enix will guard Taphorn at the inbound here. Kenzie Campbell also out there for Marietta guarding Watchman now. Watchman kicks back to Burns. Let's set something up. 44-43. Bosch underneath from Taphorn. Caroline Taphorn, eight points, eight assists now. And Cassidy is up to six points. Two of three of eight shooting now for Cassidy. A rare day out from the field of inefficiency. 46-43, we're in the final nine. Pass inside, Enix will walk into a layup and that's good. Enix with 16. We're starting to see some crooked numbers. Stolen away. Marietta can take the lead. Enix back to the basket. The senior slowing it down. Gives off to Congrove. Back out to Enix. Enix keeping the flow moving. Campbell off to Cummins. Cummins bounce pass inside. She'll run it down before it crosses over the middle line. Seven to work with for Marietta. A very important possession. In a double team kick out. Enix for three. It's good at the buzzer. And now it's tipped out of bounds off of Capital. That's not a great call. We can see it from right here. Coach Jeffers calls a timeout to regain control here. Marietta will keep possession in a full timeout call by Capital. They lead 48-46. 7.59 to go. We'll be right back. Capital University presents The Good Guarantee. The Good Guarantee promises families who work for nonprofits or in public service will never have to pay more than 50% tuition based on their total amount of financial aid. This includes your talent, merit, and need-based aid. You can live on campus or at home. It's renewable for up to eight semesters, and you can study any major and minor. Current students can apply too. You qualify if you or your spouse or your parent or guardian work for a nonprofit or public service organization and you are a full-time undergrad. Because we want to create purposeful people, courageous community, and hopeful humanity. The world needs more good. The world needs you. You invest in others, we invest in you. For more information, visit capital.edu slash good guarantee. Seven fifty nine to play. Playoff type atmosphere here tonight. And it's gonna feel this way the rest of the season here as time is getting short for both teams to make a move in the OAC regular season. That was tipped, so not an over and back. That ball did go off of Capital, by the way, before the timeout there. Enix drives inside. Travels. Good call by our official there at the top of your screen. Enix Kind of slid into Stone Rock there, trying to get the contact, and she turns it over. That's 21 turnovers now. And did Capital just give it up? Nope. Goes out of bounds here off of Marietta. Capital not taking good care of the ball either with 17 of those. Make it 18. Stripped away. Con Congrove, layup. She missed it. Enix, put back, blocked, and Capital gets it back. 
And now a foul call by Congrove. A huge break for Capital that Congrove couldn't finish there. Congrove called for the block. Jill Congrove with her third foul. She has to score there. And it goes into Burns. 46-48. Capital trails. Watchman to Burns. And Capital will set up something here in the half court. It goes to Bosch. Bosch down low. Tap point wide open. And she's fouled. Ooh, she was looking for that call. Tapporn will head to the line for two to try to tie the game. 8 points, 8 assists, 2 rebounds, 3 make it 4 steals. And Taphorn heads to the line for two big free throws. Capital not even thinking about making a move to the bench. They're going to ride their starting five the rest of the way home and they only have two timeouts left. This is where all that conditioning in November and October comes into play. Taphorn misses the first free throw. 75% from the field. Uh, from the free throw line, excuse me, on the season for Caroline. Taphorn gets the second. Capital within one. Both teams using full court pressure as well, so it's not like they're getting a break on either side. Handed off to Devin Hefner. Now Enix goes to work on Watchman. Great defense from Ellie straight up there. Haley Ross fresh into the contest to Enix. Hefner driving baseline. A low pass to Cummins. Kicked out to Ross over and back. Big stop from Capital defensively. Let's see what they can do on the offensive side now. Loose to Ritza comes in. And I understand wanting to ride your starting five. Go with what got you here, but the way Ritz has been playing in this one, feed the hot hand as well. And that's what they do. Tap horn, Stone Rock. Right wing now Burns. Fakes inside tap horn, gives it to Bosch. Bosch still looking inside. A lot of traffic inside, nothing really going outside. Bosch found a lane to the basket, but somehow it didn't go down for her there. She's like that left side today. 6.15 to play. And a foul is called against Caroline Taphorn. That's her first. Forty-eight, forty-seven. Marietta has been sitting on forty-eight for some time here. Capital's been playing really good defense. Enix driving baseline on Stone Rock, and the fadeaway no good. Cassidy Bosch gets the rebound and creates some room. Tap porn now across the timeline. Each possession becoming bigger and bigger on each side. On the right wing now Burns. Bosch tried to clear inside. Each team with two fouls, by the way, here in the quarter. Burns, three ball, left it short. Watchman is going to say that's our ball, and it is. Ellie Watchman making something happen there on the offensive rebound. Twenty seconds on the shot clock. Pass goes into Burns. Stone Rock inside. Watchman hand in her face. Doesn't matter. Ellie gets the basket. Ellie's got 22. And can tie her career high at the line here to make it 23. We talked a lot about senior leadership in our coach's conversation with head coach Dixie Jeffers before this game. Ellie Watchman leading the way with 22 for Capital. She misses the free throw, but Capital still holds the lead. Ross. Deritza. A lot of inexperienced players out there for Marietta. Drive in, no good from Hefner. Offensive putback, also no good from Campbell. Two more missed shots on the other side. Tapporn running it down. 
inside to Stone Rock on a skip pass. They feed Watchman again under the basket. She can't get it to go. Tap out. Stone Rock collects it. Taphorn has it. She's left open. And Capital resetting. Watchman hands off now to Burns. Burns drives left side. Floater no good off back iron. And rebound collected by Doritza. Still a one point game. This has been such a good game down this stretch here. Timeout called. We have 426 to decide this ball game. Marietta will take a full timeout and we'll be right back. Lunch, the most unappreciated meal of the day, which is why we at Freshie are screaming from the rooftops, let there be lunch. And no, not a sad sandwich at your desk. We're talking a flavorful Tex-Mex burrito after a brisk walk or a nutritious kale Caesar with your work bestie. So let's do our minds, bodies, and taste buds a favor and let there be lunch. Download the game-changing new Freshie app to have your food ready or order at Freshie.com. OSU Sports Medicine is a proud supporter of Crusader student-athletes by providing sports health services for Capital University Athletics and Student Health Services. Through the work and care of team physicians and athletic trainers, it's the team behind your team. For all fans, if you're looking to improve your physical performance, recover from an injury, or stay active for a lifetime, the experts at Ohio State Sports Medicine are there for you. Visit sportsmedicine.osu.edu or call 366 Four three three two. Welcome back. 426 to play. 49-48. This has been a fun ball game to call, and we have an exciting finish on our hands. And Capital has seen some heartbreakers for sure. Down the stretch here at home this season. They lost to uh, Mount Union by three. Final on that one was 68-65. They lost to John Carroll by two. Both games they had the ball in the last minute. Chance to tie. There's been some more heartbreakers on the road as well. And this could come down to that final possession again. Three ball, no good. Erica Linder, by the way, has checked in for Emma Burns. Burns was hit in the face. And not sure if that's part of this decision or if they're just trying to give her a quick breather. But Linder's out there, the freshman. Linder. Gives off to Stone Rock. Stone Rock, top of the key, left wing, Bosch. Bosch looks inside. Now back outside is Taphorn around a screen. Leaves it for Stone Rock. She looks inside. There's nothing there. Reagan along two, no good. And the rebound is collected by Campbell. Arietta's turn. Who's going to strike next? We've been sitting at 49-48. Double dribble called. The turnovers continue on the other side. 23 turnovers the fact that they've had 23 turnovers and Marietta is only down by one here speaks volumes Ellie Watchman is going to get a breather here as Amert comes in two timeouts left for Capital three timeouts for Marietta and the all important possession arrow is favoring Marietta Capital gives it up the turnovers continue on Capital's side Inside, it's Enix. And she gets it to go around Stone Rock. Alex Enix willing her team back into this game. And she's giving them the lead once again. 3.06 to play. Capital has numbers. Bosch fakes the pass and is fouled by Doritza. So Cassidy, yet another senior, heads to the line. Capital just trying to get a few minutes by here with Watchman on the bench to rest up for the, the stretch run. She's got 22 points and nine rebounds tonight. Bosch makes the free throw to give her seven. Bosch at the line again, knocks in the second, gives Capital the lead. Let's play some defense. It goes into Campbell. Campbell's played this whole quarter, getting some big time minutes. We haven't seen Marlo Taylor tonight, I assume an injury. No indication that she was hurt headed into this one. Don't know if it's a pregame situation, but Marietta's been looking for offense without her out there. She averages double figures for this Marietta team. Pass goes inside. Doritza gets it to go. 
Lou Staritza has 2.7 points per game this season. Tonight, she has 12. Stone Rock gives off to Linder. Linder back to Bosch now on the right wing. Bosch inside, Taphorn, double team. She finds the open man. There's another open man. Linder driving in. Mid-range jump shot, no good. Cassidy Bosch, offensive rebound, and she's fouled. Bosch with a huge offensive rebound. Ellie will come back on for capital. And Reagan Stonerock hits the bench. Timeout called. Actually, not a timeout. My mistake. That's the fifth foul against Jill Congrove. So Congrove fouls out, and both teams steal a timeout and steal a water break for the Crusaders. Ross will check back in. I've never been a fan of this huddle after a player falling out. Keep the game moving. Both teams turn it into a free timeout, essentially. And it will benefit Capital due to the, again, fatigue situation with the players that have been out there for Capital for pretty much the entire game. Cassidy Bosch, I don't believe, has come out this second half. Free throws, no good. Well, we've been at an odd number, whereas Marietta's been at an even number. Oh, she misses the second. I was going to say we might have a tie game on our hands. But the offensive rebound turns into nothing for Capital. And they can turn this into a two-possession game with a three, not that either team has shot well from outside. Ross had a look, gives it off. Enix hands off now to Campbell. Campbell. Goes inside Enix. Around a double team, through a double team. She gets pulled to the ground. She throws it away. Capital basketball. Yet another stop for Capital. 52 51. Stone Rock checks in. Maybe. She does for Amert. Linda remains out there for Burns. There must be something going on with Emma. Getting hit in the head. Capital will inbound. Next time out, we have a situation to set up. I'll go with that thought during a break. And there is a timeout from Coach Jeffers. Capital has been in this situation many times. Again, to take you through some close losses this season. The first matchup with Baldwin Wallace on the road, Capital lost 61 56. It was 59 56 when they weren't able to get a three off. It was blocked, and two free throws made it a five-point game. Then, two games later here at the Capitol Center, we saw Mount Union come storming back and defeat Capitol. Capitol again had the ball in the last possession, couldn't get a basket. Two games later, John Carroll down by 15. Capitol comes back, turns it into a two-point game. They throw the ball away in the last sequence of that game. Three close losses. We take you to Ohio Northern next where they lost 55-52. I asked Coach Jeffers after that Ohio Northern game what was going on with this late situation. She said she's been working with a new group, and they might come in in that kind of a situation. And that sets up a really interesting personnel decision down the stretch with the way Watchman has played. As she misses here, Stone Rock gets the offensive rebound. Taphorn has it, fakes the three, and Capital resets. This starting five has carried Capital today. Taphorn's fouled. She'll go to the line to take the lead. The personnel that came in at the end of the first at the end of the first half against Muskingum, Capital had a sequence in which it was the last 30 seconds. They called a timeout and they brought in a lot of freshmen in that group, a lot of shooters in that group. They brought in Nancy Siegel, Natalie Galadio was in that group. Demi Brewer, I believe, was in that group. And it'd be really interesting to see if <laughs> Coach would actually go to that group for the last seconds because the starting five weren't, haven't been able to get it done. That sets up a really interesting finish. Taphorn gets another steal. Oh my goodness, they say she's not fouled. Wow. So Taphorn gets the steal. Looked like she was fouled, but they're going to say no foul. 
Taphorn now being told by Watchman, you've got to let this go. That's a big call. Marietta calls a timeout. And Coach Jeffers wants an explanation as she motions to the officials that she was shoved out. 53-52, it's been a fun one here. I'm Jimmy Bloomfield again. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Follow us along on Twitter, at Cap Crusaders. We've had some interesting highlights being posted all night and uh, something we will look to continue to do here in the future. 105 left to play. The possession arrow still favors Marietta. Capital has one timeout, two timeouts on the other side for the Pioneers who have the basketball after a uh, controversial no call there. Both teams shooting over 45%, and it's because we're seeing a lot of baskets inside. Points in the paint today, 32-28 in favor of Capital. There's only been four three-pointers made. Some old school basketball here tonight. Doritza, actually Enix, that's towing the baseline and she steps out of bounds. Capital gets another stop. Linder, pointing to the bench. She call a timeout? Yeah, she does, she calls a timeout. Coach Jeffers calls a timeout. We'll, we'll step, uh, we'll stay here actually. Let's go through the OAC scoreboard while we have a moment. There's been a lot of blowouts tonight. So let's go through some of those scores to see if the blowouts held. First up, on the road, Baldwin-Wallace at Ohio Northern. The Polar Bears made it closer, but they lose 57-47. John Carroll defeats Heidelberg 61-42. Mount Union drops a hundo on Muskingum. 100-75, the final there, goodness gracious. And Otterbein looks like they will get a victory over Wilmington by a count of 70 to 60 with 45 seconds left. They should be able to hang on there, which puts Otterbein for now in a tie in the win column with Capital. They'll remain one game back if Capital wins. If Capital loses, however, we have once again a three-way tie at six and seven for the final home team in the first round, that number four spot being coveted by pretty much everybody in the bottom half of the conference right now that's in the playoff picture. Capital breaks huddle. Emma Burns remains sidelined for the Crusaders. Capital leads by one. 53-52, it goes into Linder. They can milk off 30 seconds here and take it down under 20, oh no, that's a turnover. We have that tie up, and I've been mentioning for the last five minutes, the all important possession arrow favors Marietta. They call a timeout. They get the basketball back. You normally in these situations, you, you'd say the team that has it last wins. <laughs> the team that is on defense seemed to have the upper hand all night. That's yet another turnover. 25 turnovers for Marietta. 20 turnovers for Capital. Make it 21 with that last one there. And not having Burns available, apparently, with Linder playing big minutes here down the stretch. Linder, I believe, was a part of that closing group that came in at the end of that Muskingo game that I was mentioning. She remains out there with the rest of the starters. Marietta showing Ross, Deritza, Campbell, Enix, and Hefner. Literally the hot hand approach on the other side. Campbell being guarded closely here by Taphorn. Capital has two fouls to give. They almost take it away. Deritza has it. And then looks like she traveled or Bosch got shoved. They say play on. Campbell spins it home. No timeouts for Capital. Taphorn to Watchman. They've got numbers. Stone Rock looking ahead. Now plays it back. Taphorn is still not across the timeline. The biggest spot of the game, and it's Capital starters here to try to will them to a victory. Taphorn has it. They've got to go. 
54-53, tap horn, it's knocked out of bounds. Stays here, eight seconds to work with. <coughs> You've gotta go here, you just don't have time. Your defense has been playing so well, give yourself a chance to foul. Eight seconds to work with, seven now, tap horn. Five to shoot, tap horn for three. No good. Watchman, offensive rebound. No foul called. It's loose. It's a tie-up. Capital has the basketball. 2.9 seconds. Oh, my goodness. No timeouts for Capital. And here we are again. Can Capital get a buzzer beater? Tap horn to pass it in. No timeouts. Pass goes, and it's thrown away. That's how it ends. Hefner takes it away from Taphorn, and yet again, a one possession game, and Capital can't pull it out in the end. Mackenzie Campbell with the game winning layup. What a finish, what a ball game, and what a disappointment as well for everyone there on the Capital sideline. 54-53, Marietta with a huge win. We'll wrap it up as part of the Byers Airport Subaru Post Game Show in just a second. New vehicles, reliable pre-owned vehicles, top-notch, high-quality service technicians, and friendly, trustworthy sales associates dedicated to customer service. Byers Airport Subaru in Columbus is ready to get you into the vehicle that you were meant for. Stop by to see our selection at 401 North Hamilton Road in Columbus and take a test drive or call Byers Airport Subaru at 877-265-9695 today. Byers Airport Subaru is a proud supporter of Crusader Athletics. Subaru, confidence in motion. Welcome back to the Capital Center. A game that Capital seemingly had in control. Marietta got a little spurt there at the end of the third quarter. This game was very close heading into the fourth. And Marietta outscores Capital 14 or 13 to 9 plus 4 in the fourth quarter. And it was enough to give the victory to the other side. Marietta with that win, as we jump into the OAC standings, brought to you by Army ROTC, we are now back into a three-way tie with Otterbein, who we've split against this season, and Marietta, who is six and seven as well, and has the two wins against Capital this season. So we want to see them lose the rest of the way, so Capital can stay up in front of them. Both teams at the top of the conference, Baldwin Wallace and John Carroll win. Ohio Northern lost as well. A real opportunity for Capital to gain a game there, and they don't. All right, what else is there to talk about in this late game situation? I have it circled in front of me now. Capital, in their last five losses, with the ex five of their last six losses, excuse me, with the exception of the Marietta blowout on the road, they've lost a game in which they had the basketball in the last... 30 seconds with a chance to either tie or win the game. And each time they've come up empty, I think tonight is the one that hurts the most. Weren't able to make it happen and they throw it away in the last few minutes or in the last two seconds with a chance to take the lead. A game that Ellie Watchman was dominant, 22 points on 10 of 14 shooting. 11 points for Caroline Taphorn. She had eight assists. She had five steals by my count. And the stats actually do back that up with five. Two rebounds as well, but she also had six turnovers. And the last play was that turnover from Taphorn, throwing it in, taken away by Devin Hefner. Alex Enix deserves some credit. She also had six turnovers. She had three steals, 21 points, and seven rebounds, though, and loose the Ritz off the bench, 12 points for Marietta. Uh, some other leaders for Capital, eight points for Bosch with two steals, seven rebounds from Reagan Stonerock. She did not score in this game, 22 and 10 from Ellie Watchman, six points from Emma Burns, four from Kaylee Cyphers. And a 13-9 final frame was the difference. Here's a telling stat just of how this game went. Capital ended up 
with 22 turnovers. They had 27 rebounds. Marietta had 28 rebounds and 26 turnovers. And despite 48 combined turnovers, Marietta had just 19 points from turnovers, and Capital had even less at 13. Wow. Lots of back-to-back -back sequences with turnovers. and A sloppy game turned into a hectic finish. No timeout for Capital in that last sequence, and they tried to make it out there with the guys on the floor. They weren't able to do it, and that's how this one ends. The starters for Capital were played a lot of minutes in this game. 36 for Bosch, 35 for Tapporn, 30 for Watchman, 30 for Burns. And they were relied on heavily, but they couldn't pull it out at the end. So we go into uh, another road trip now. It's just a one-game trip up to John Carroll in a game that Capital really needs. They need to stay up on these six and seven and five and eight teams. They are only two games up on Heidelberg for the last spot. Not to say that you know the, the ship is, is crashing here and you're gonna have problems down the stretch to make the tournament, but it just shows you how tight it is four through nine right now in the OAC, so every game is big. Capital has revenge on their mind again with their trip to John Carroll. We'll be back next week. Heidelberg and Baldwin-Wallace, the final two home games for Capital this season. Sad stats to report here on the Byers Airport Subaru Post Game Show, but we will close it from the Capital Center. I've been, I'm Jimmy Bloomfield. We invite you to tune in on Saturday. Charlie Dance will be back for the men's game when the men play host to John Carroll. Always a good game over on the men's side. We thank you for tuning in tonight, and as always, have a great one. We'll catch you next time.